Hi, my name is Matt Hines and I'm running for election in Washington State. And today is election day. So what I'd like to ask you to do is take a walk with me and talk about some of the things that I've been through and some of the things that I expect to happen within the next few hours and possibly the next few days. So let's take a walk down here. So now that it is just uh, a little bit before the election, actually a few hours, I'd like to talk to a little bit about what I've been doing for the past week and how my uh, campaign strategy has evolved a little bit. Tuesday, Wednesday, I went up and did a campaign in the north of the district. And when I say the north of the di district, that are those are the towns of Marysville, uh, Lake Stevens, and Snohomish. And my strategy was to go out and use the truck of freedom as much as possible, which has my banner on the side, and to let people just look at the banners and see me, and that way when they look at their ballot and their voter pamphlet, they don't just look at a picture, but yeah, I remember that guy. I, I, you know, he was actually out here, and he's got that cool pickup, and yeah, I, you know, he looks like somebody that might be interesting, and somebody definitely worth voting for, rather than somebody that I never see and only seems to collect money um, and make money off of her position in the government. So that was my initial strategy, was just to spend the last week getting out. Well, of course, uh, campaigning doesn't always turn out the way you want. And on Monday, actually, I was uh, getting ready to go out and uh, do my truck campaigning. And I had a malfunction in my truck. And I ended up having to drive all the way out to Everett, which thankfully was in the in the north of my district, uh, but not in my district, but close to it. So once uh, we found out that it was just a simple wire had become disconnected, then I was able to continue um, and begin uh, campaigning out in the town of Snohomish, which I drove to. And here's where I um, inadvertently came upon the idea of truck painting. Um, I was actually going to go out and with my banners on the side of my truck, stand on the back of my truck and wave to people and wave the flag. But it wasn't long after I'd parked on the roundabout coming out of Snohomish that a sheriff came and said, you know, you can't be on the roundabout. So he kicked me off. So I drove down a little ways down Highway 9 and I stopped at um, uh, the off ramp to Snohomish. And there I decided, well, what I'm going to do is instead of standing on the tailgate of my truck, I am going to go ahead and pop the sunroof out and just stand on the seat of my truck. And I'm just going to wave the flag and wave at the voters as they drive by on Highway 9. Now, that actually worked quite well. And so I decided that uh, the next day I would do that. And I did the same thing out in uh, the Lake, near Lake Stevens and Lake Stevens is a affluent community and it is basically between uh, the northern my northern district towns of Arlington and Snohomish so I uh, truck campaigned from the side of Highway 9 and I got all kinds of fantastic responses and thumbs up and everybody just seemed to be for me and they seemed to be voting for me and you know even the law enforcement and uh, you know EMS and all the firemen or whatever they all seemed to be giving me the thumbs up and this thing and so and it was just a fantastic you know uh, reaction from people just I think to be able to see somebody that's really running for Congress and not just a image in their voter pamphlet so that worked very well and then my net plan the next day was to start in the town of Marysville which is on the western at northwestern edge of my district and so I did that I sat you know and and I just have to tell you that every day it has been hot it has been very humid and so I'm out in a tank top and a, a pair of swim trunks and it's um it's not easy and and waving a, a heavy flag and waving and my shoulders, you know, after the first few days, they started to, you know, kind of be sore. But um, I went to Arlington, and then after Arlington, 
I said, well, I'm going to shoot across the district and I'm going to head over to uh, another major roadway, and that is 522, where I parked in the intersection. I parked between the two or the four lanes going this, or the two lanes going this way, the two lanes going out to the town of Monroe, and these lanes go, going towards Woodenville in Seattle. And so I parked there and I did the truck campaigning thing for a while until the um, state patrol showed up and uh, said in no uncertain terms, well, you can't, uh, you can't actually park here and you can't be, be doing this, but they were very nice about it. And in the end, I think I got them to admit that they were gonna vote for me. So that was, uh, you know, kind of an interesting um, interaction, but I got a lot, I mean, thousands, there's just so much traffic on this highway. And the reason they came out, they said, was because they started to get calls, one or two. And then as these Democrats started coming by, and you know, you can tell because they give you the finger, then they said, well, we started getting more calls, so we actually had to respond. So that was what I did for, uh, for truck campaigning on Thursday. And then on Friday, I went uh, back to the 405 bridge, and this had been my third week on the 405 bridge. So I drive around in the truck of freedom in the morning, and then I got out there to, um, to the bridge uh, on Friday afternoon. And once again, on my third week out there, um, massive response and a lot of favorable response. So I was able to reach with just this truck campaigning thing, thousands and thousands of voters. So that was actually very successful and how successful we're gonna find out um, a little bit later on today. But that was the um, gist of my campaigning. And then at least for the last week and then on Saturday, um, at, at which time I'm really starting to get, to get tired. And as I said, my shoulders are starting to hurt and I'm just sunburnt and it's just about time to, uh, you know, I don't know how much longer I can do it. So on Saturday, I put out my last campaign signs, and then Sunday, of course, I took off, and then on Monday, which was yesterday, I went to um, the, uh, oh, actually, the first thing I did is I started off by putting the Truck of Freedom into action. I put my loudspeaker on the top, and I played the uh, Ride of the Valkyries, and uh, very loud, and I drove through the towns of Redmond, I drove through the towns of Kirkland, and I drove through the uh, metropolis now of Bellevue. And I got another rounding, resounding, favorable response. People were very happy, and they just thought it was so interesting and to see my truck and to hear the ride of the Valkyries and to see the flags flying. And so I'm sure they thought, well, I'm looking at some kind of Wagnerian, Wagnerian opera. But... Um, they seem to be favorable towards it, and so that was what I did um, for the morning hours and into the afternoon. And then finally, I went to the intersection where I actually started my campaign, and I started putting up signs, and that is at the uh, causeway between uh, Lake Sammamish Parkway and 522, which is the exit point for a lot of Microsoft workers. So that was what I did last night, and I thought, well, this is probably not going to be a place where I'm going to get a very favorable response. But even where you have a lot of Microsoft and tech workers, um, and even wearing the Make America Great Again hat, things seem to be going rather well, and for at least 50% favorable response. So a lot of, you know, people just driving by, they just want to get home and they don't care. But uh, about 50%, I'd say, of people that were waving and honking and, and some people were just going crazy, carloads of girls, you know, yelling. And so um, that was interesting. And throughout the campaign, I've had a lot of favorable responses. I've had probably a, a total of 10, if even that, middle fingers. But um, otherwise it's been very favorable and unlike my first or the last campaign I did in 2022. So things are definitely different now and so today is election day and in a few hours we're going to find out who is going to be in the um, general election. There will be two of us that are picked and so this video um, will be except for the one that I do post election 
if I survive this election and I go into the general, then I will continue to campaign and I will continue to make videos. If not, I will make one more video as kind of a summary, a postscript of what things I think I did right, what things I think I did wrong, uh, what went against me in the campaign. But what I think now, a few hours before, is that I definitely have a much better chance in this campaign that I did in the last one. In the last campaign, I did not have my truck because it was in the shop. And in the last campaign, I was expecting to have the endorsement or no endorsement um, from Snohomish County. I, they told me that they would um, not endorse anybody till after the election. So I believe that. And then I found out right before the election, no, they had actually stolen it. They had actually defrauded me. And um, so this, you know, you, if you've seen the previous videos I've done that they've defrauded me in this election as well. And um, so if this is, if I survive the general or the primary election, then I will continue to make videos. If I don't, then all of the videos that I've done and all of the footage that I've taken will go into my documentary Rigged in a State of Hate 2, which will talk about how the you know Republican Party and how it is very difficult to run or even to win an election in Washington State. So that's how it is. I appreciate you spending some time with me and I hope you enjoy the outdoors and I'm just so glad it is not hot today and it's a little bit cloudy and overcast. So good luck to you and if you're in the first district, please uh, think of voting for me in the primary and in the general election. And hopefully, well, we will see you again. We'll see you either in the documentary or also, I, I, I guess before I quit, I want you to please, I'm waiting for Bayview Entertainment to put out my four documentaries called Bigfoot Blood Mystery. And depending on what happens in this election and in the general election, then we're going to see how much that, those incidents in Cascade Bigfoot Blood Mystery actually influenced this election and these events. So it's all very interesting for me and I took up the whole election because, or I, 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 I ran for election because I just wanted to run an experiment to just see how much the events of Cascade Bigfoot Blood Mystery would influence the events of this election. So I don't know, we're going to find out tonight and you can come to the conclusion you want, but and the last thing I'm going to say is please keep a lookout for my documentaries and hopefully I will see you again after the primary election. Thank you for your time. Talk to you soon. Congressman Susan Del Bendy has been in office since 2012, using her substantial financial resources thanks to Microsoft and her $84 million fortune, she has been able to continually maintain an office where people still have little idea what she's done. While well, she's learned to dance around and she's learned to do all the political maneuvers you have to do to keep getting reelected. Well, Susan Del Bendy, it's time for you to go.